Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone on Zoom. Good morning, everyone that came into the sanctuary on this stormy weather day. Praise God. This Praise is God. the fourth Sunday in the month of August, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. So please remember to please put your devices on mute. Praise God. Please put your phones on mute. Amen. Amen. So Good morning. This is Patty. Together as we we'll begin Amen. our worship service. Good morning, Hattie. Please stand for the call to worship. Yeah, started already. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She's there, but I'm not hearing anything. It just started. Oh, wonderful! Eddie. It is. I know. Dwelling place for God. <laughs> there is a place for everyone. No one is turned away. The least. And the lost, the homeless, and hopeless are always Praise welcome in God. Praise God who invites house. and shelters us all. Praise to God who heal and send us forth to serve. Okay. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 513, Soldiers of Christ Arise.
Praise God. Let us say our opening prayer together. Holy One of mystery and power. Power. There is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below, keeping covenant and steadfast love with all who walk before you with pure and upright hearts. Fill our lives with your glory as you fill the temple with cloud. When Solomon first brought the ark into your holy dwelling place, Give us the strength and the power to withstand the forces of evil at work in our lives and in our world. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we're going to lift up our prayer concerns and our response is, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We're lifting up Sister Jackie at this time as she's about to do another fusion. And we're praying that God give her the strength as well as the doctors that are administering to her and those caretakers. Praise God, as well as our daughter and our son. So we're asking that God to just be with Sister Jackie while she needs her healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear prayers. Our We're lifting up the young people. We're lifting up all the children of Bethel, the elderly. We're lifting up the sick and the shut in. Uh, we're lifting up Sister Starks, who's not feeling well today. And we're asking that God just strengthen everybody during this difficult time. Lord, Lord. hear our prayers. We're praying for the people in Afghanistan as well as the people in Haiti. We're praying that they get the aid and the support that they need um, during the conflict that is happening over in both countries. So we're asking that God just bring peace and unity and that love and restoration will come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. We're praying for the school as they're beginning to uh, open up. Uh, back to school, we're praying that with the, all the COVID concerns that are going on, we're praying that things will just be in order in God's time. And at the same time, that protection will come for the children. Lord, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. Praying for all the pastors, the district, the superintendent, the bishop, the New York Annual Conference. We are praying that God would just strengthen all the leaders of government and that he will be over us all. Give us the wisdom to lead. Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there any other prayer concerns at this time? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Jackie, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Any other? Amy and Tia Harrison, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come this day seeking your guidance, seeking instructions, seeking your help. We come this day, oh God, because we want to worship you. Father, you 
have protected us so far from bringing us here safely, God. So we give you thanks, God, for bringing us here safely in the sanctuary uh, throughout the storm, God. We ask, oh God, that you just watch over us, that you protect us, God. We're, we're asking that when we go back home, that no harm and danger come near us. Uh, Lord, we're asking even that you just rain down upon us your mercy, your love, and your grace. Uh, oh, Father, we're praying, oh God, for for healing in this world and healing in this nation. God, we're, we're praying for Sister Jackie while she waits for the fusion. God, we're praying, God, that, oh, Jesus, that you touch her body, that she feel a, a little shiver in her body and her soul, God, and, and that she'll continue, oh, God, to work in, in restoration and, and deliverance and healing. Touch her membranes, God. Touch her soul. Uh, touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Father, bless the doctors and the nurses, God. We're asking for your mercy upon her and on our life, Jesus. We're also praying for those members who are sick and shut in. We're praying for Sister Kimberly and Sister Esther. Oh, bring healing continually unto Sister Dorothy. Oh, Father, just strengthen us, oh God. Strengthen us in this journey called life. Oh, Jesus, the, the man, the man that, that is here this morning is asking for prayer for his brother. Brother. God, you know what he stands in need of. And God, we're asking that you stop by his bedpost, God. Oh, Lord, why is in the ICU, God? Bring recovery to him, Father. Oh, Jesus, let your healing virtues, oh God, be felt while he's there in the bed in the hospital, God. God, you are great and you're worthy to be praised. So we're asking God that you just uh, touch the children as they go back to school, God. Touch all of us while we're still in the pandemic, one uh, worrying about the COVID and the Delta variant. Jesus, oh God, you are the Prince of Peace. So you said us not to be anxious for anything, but to just pray without ceasing. By prayer and supplication, we're making our requests on them to you, oh God. And we give you thanks, God, because you are our refuge, our strength, and our ever present help in the time of trouble. So, God, we're asking that you bring strength to Sister Stark, so oh God. Bring strength to the Booker family, oh God. Bring strength to those who are still mourning, God. Bring strength, oh God, to those who are grieving. Oh, bring strength, oh God, to this church right now. Touch those that are on Zoom, God, or oh, waiting to hear a word from you. Be with the other other members of oh God who have concerns in their hearts, so whatever they're seeking, whatever their, 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 their hearts desire, God, you know what they need, and we ask, oh God, that you grant it unto them. Father, we're praying for the nation of Afghanistan. We're praying that the turmoil will cease. Father, just touch women all over this world, God, and we're praying for the country of Haiti. Father, help them to get the aid that they need. Let the equipment come and the medical supplies come. Father, just be with that country during their time of need. And touch every leader, oh God. Touch every pastor, oh God. Touch the bishop and the district superintendent. Bless the United Methodist Church, oh God. Bless this conference and unite us as one. And God, when everything is done and said, that you, God, get the utmost honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 And our prayer response is, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place.
Amen. Amen. Are you feeling the presence of the Lord here in this place this morning? Amen. 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 And with the Amen. love of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we welcome you, everyone, on this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Praise God. So we welcome Amen. you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bring greetings to you. Are there any first-time visitors here worshiping with us this morning? If so, can you please stand and announce who you are? Amen. 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 Welcome, welcome, Joey. Amen. Amen. Not, not yet. Oh, once again. <laughs> okay. So we just want to uh, formally welcome Joey that is worshiping us for the first time here at Bethel. And we pray that God will bless you and that you receive something to take with you when you go back home or wherever you're going on your destination from today's service. Amen. 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 Welcome those that are on Zoom once again, and welcome those that, that press their way in to be here in the service today. Amen. Amen. I'm truly grateful. Uh, Amen. Sister Brenda, you have an announcement? Good morning, church. Good morning, viewers at home. Good morning, pastor. I would just like to bring up to date with some of the event totals that we had. We recently had some events, and I would just like to give the church and the congregation some of the totals. Women's Day was $2,435 that came in. International Day, $1,200. The Tea Party, $410. Um, friends and family. $1,685. I want to thank you all for contributing. I want to thank you all for having these events. Every little bit helps and for us to keep prospering and keep having these events because they do make a dent in some of the bills. So thank you all here in the congregation. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you, viewers at home. And so thank your friends and families for helping us make these totals come to come to life. Thank you. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Sister Brenda, and those that are working diligently on the finance committee, Sister Stark, Sister Lanley, and Sister Hattie. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for just uh, being so faithful and consistent with helping uh, Bethel, the light at the corner, in order for us to do what we need to do. Praise God. And as Sister Brenda says, every little thing, every little donation, every little offering, every tithe, every little tithe counts. And so our next event that we're having is our Bakeless Bake Sale, and that is September 4th. Saturday, September 4th, and we're going to have it via Zoom, our Bakeless Bake Sale, and that's from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., and we're asking each member or, or, or anyone to please donate $50 or donate what you can towards the, our Bakeless Bake Sale. Praise God. So please come on that Zoom call from 1 to 3 p.m. where we'll have fellowship. Amen. Saturday, September 4th, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., and we're having our Bakeless Bake Sale. Next Sunday, as a reminder, we're going to have a youth Sunday service, and we'll be celebrating the youth as they're getting ready to go back to school, and, we're, and we'll be collecting a youth offering for that Sunday. We're going to resume our prayer and Bible study sessions on Tuesday, September 14th, at 8, 8 o'clock to 9 p.m., and that will be done via Zoom. Amen? Amen. Are there any joys? Amen. I like to look at your faces or you're like, are there any joys that you look back at me like pasta? Okay. Yes. <laughs> 
we're here and we're alive and we're happy. Praise God. You know, it's the expert. <laughs> amen. Amen. We are here. We are alive. So thanks be to God for waking us up this morning. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to pass the peace, the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. So wave your hands. Peace of the Lord be with you. Pass the peace on Zoom. Peace. Thank you, Brother Nathaniel. Peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Amen. Amen. We'll continue our worship service with the ministry of the word. Everyone together, oh God, we invoke your presence as we read your word. Teach us to stand in your truth, gird our loins, and help us to overcome our fears in serving you and others. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is coming from 1 Kings chapter 8. That be and Sister Brenda will be reading the scripture readings for us. First Kings chapter 8, from verse 1, then verse 6, then verses 10 to 11, verses 22 to 30, and then verses 41 to 43. And she'll also read the epistle reading, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Please adhere to God's holy word. Good morning again, Bethel. And the reading goes as this, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse verse. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the ancestral house of Israelites, before King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. Now we're going to verse six. Then the priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place in the inner sanctuary of the house, in the most holy place underneath the wings of the trimmer. Now we go into verses 10 to 11. You okay, Pastor? Okay. Okay, now you're good. And when the priests came out of the holy place, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Now we go on to verse 22 to 30. Solomon's prayer of dedication. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O oh Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants. Who walk before you with all their heart the covenant that you keep for your servants my father David as you declare him you promise with your mouth and have this this day fulfilled with your hand therefore O Lord God of Israel keep for your servant my father David that which you promised him saying this shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? 
even heaven and the more highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayers and his plea. Oh, Lord, my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servants pray to, to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you said, my name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servants praise, praise towards this place. Now we're going to verses 41 to 43. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, comes from a distant land because of your name, for they shall hear of your great name, your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When a foreigner comes and prays towards this house, then hear in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all that the foreigner calls you to do so that all the people of the earth may know your name and fear you as you do, as do your people of Israel. And so that they may know that your name has been invoked on this house that I have built. Thank you. Let us add a blessing to these words. Now we'll read to, we'll go to the epistles, um, chapter six. I'll be reading from verses 10 to 20. Chapter six of the, I'm sorry, Ephesians. I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 to 20. Children and parents. Now we're going to chapter verse 10. The holy, the whole armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of the blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the cosmetic power of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of this, take the shield of faith, which will be able to squinch, squinch all the flaming arrows of evil ones. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and ever, every prayer and scopulations to that end keep alert and always preserve in scopulations for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Let us add a blessing to these words. Thanks be to Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Baker. Thank you. Please stand for the gospel reading. The gospel reading is coming from John chapter 6. <clears throat> verses 56 to 69, John chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living father sent me and I live because of the father, 
So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Preparation is immortal, invisible, God only wise. <laughs>
Please be seated. Today's message is called the whole armor of God. Amen. And I'll be coming from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your presence throughout the service. We give you thanks, God, for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, at this time, I ask that you continue to touch me, that you continue to use me. Father, I pray that they also receive a word from thee. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, you are my rock, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The armor of God. Amen. We are led to believe, church, that this world is not full of evil. Some of us may believe that this is a perfect world. But over this past year, and even within this year, uh, we see a lot of chaos and confusion that is out there in this world. Amen? There is no Amen. harmony, and everyone is not getting along with one another. We can look to what is happening in Afghanistan. We see the chaos and the confusion that is happening there with the Taliban. And we can even look in our own communities where people are killing one another. So if we are led to believe that this world is perfect, we are living in our own bubble. Church, there are people and there are forces out there whose purpose is to create evil, to create havoc and chaos in this world. Amen? Last week Sunday, I mentioned that like a roaring lion, it's 1 Peter 5 verse 8, like a roaring lion. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. So, brothers and sisters, every time we wake up, the devil is not happy. He's not happy when we are waking up in the morning and that we're still in the land of the living. And because we wake up every morning, the devil is looking for who he can come, steal, kill and destroy amen but jesus amen. christ come jesus come to give us more life and to give us life more abundantly so we are on this christian journey and as we're living in the community we must be alert and be ready for those forces that are out there those evil forces that are out there and this is what paul is telling us to do church in Ephesians chapter 6, he says in verses 10 to 11, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Why are we putting on the whole armor of God, church? So that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. This is real church. This is serious. As Christians, we must be able to stand, to stand firm against the wiles of the devil. We must stand against the evil forces that are out there. Verse 12 lets us know for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. There are spiritual forces of evil and wickedness in high places. And we must prepare ourselves as soldiers prepare themselves to go into battle, to fight against those spiritual forces. Praise God. So to do that, Amen. church, we must take on the whole armor of God so that we will be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Praise God. What Amen. entails the whole armor of God? Remember the story of David and Goliath, church? And when David slew Goliath, Goliath had on his full armor 
that weighed over 120 tons because he was in battle and he dressed up like that for protection. So here in the book of Ephesians, we're seeing the military metaphor used in the writings of Paul. Also church, the Roman emperor were in power during the time of the New Testament that was written. And the Romans, they had a many legions. They had an army. They had a vast army. And their army were powerful. But the Romans used to oppress the people. The Roman emperor were very oppressive. When Jesus was crucified, it was the Roman soldiers who came to arrest Jesus, who bounded him and put him in prison. It was the Roman soldiers that flogged and whipped him and nailed him to the cross. So during the time of Jesus, as well as after his death and resurrection, the Roman emperor were still in control. One of my favorite movies, Church, is Gladiator. Has anyone ever watched that movie, Gladiator? And in the beginning of Gladiator, it shows the leader Maximus leading the powerful army in battle. And their garb was the whole armor. Amen. Praise God. So they had on the old armor. And that armor was physical. But in the body of Christ, we have a spiritual force. There are spiritual forces out there that we have to put on this whole armor of God to protect us from those spiritual forces on this Christian journey. Amen. So Paul says in verse 14, stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As Christians, we must show that we are living honestly with one another and that we are accountable for our actions. We must try to live holy and be righteous in the sight of God. Then in verse 15, he tells us as shoes for your feet. Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. The Roman soldiers wore sandals and they were heavy sandals studded with nails. I'm sorry, with hub nails to, to secure their foothold in, the, in, in their feet so that they could stand firm. So likewise, we as Christians, our shoes that make us stand firm is the gospel of peace. We will be able to stand firm when we're showing God's love. And so when the spiritual forces attack us, uh, they will see God's love. And God's love overpower evil, overpower every spiritual forces that are out there. So our shoes must be firmly planted with the gospel of peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans 10 verse 14 says... How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So we should show the love of Jesus Christ. We should love God with all our hearts, our minds, and all our souls. And so when those spiritual forces come, they cannot do anything because God's protection is over us. When we're showing love, when we're walking in with Christ's love, when we're showing peace, Many people come, the spiritual forces come with anger. And what can just be the opposite of that is peace. When we hit them with a mouth of praise and a mouth full of peace, that all that anger will go away. So that is what Paul is teaching us of, of our shoes be, be firmly planted to stand firm with the gospel of peace. Amen. And so in verse 16, it says, with all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The darts are going to come from the evil one. They'll be coming from the left and from the right, from the front and from the back. But we still need to have that shield of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we're not going to see sometimes when the enemy comes, when it comes to attack us. We can't see that. Praise God. But we are walking by faith. We're hoping of by faith that God is going to deliver us for whatever attack comes. We have faith. We must have faith and believe in God that God is going to take us through whatever storms we're going through 
in life. Amen. From every single attack by the enemy, when we have faith, God will protect us. We must believe that God is going to protect us from anything that is going to happen to us from the enemy. Praise God. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 17, verse 20, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Even if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we'll be able to move mountains. Amen. We'll be able to move the spiritual forces out of our way. Then after we have the shield of faith, we must take the helmet of salvation. Praise God, which is the word of God and the sword of the spirit, as mentioned in verse 17. Psalm 119, 105 says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, in 40 nights, he was tempted by the devil, and the devil tested Jesus with the word of God. So that means that we have to know the word of God for ourselves. Jesus was able to combat the devil with the word of God. Men will, and will, will cons human beings will misconstrue the word of God for their own purpose. So we must know the word of God. So when they come and say something to us and they're quoting scripture, we should have the discernment in our minds, in our bodies, with the help of the Holy Spirit that tells us this does not sound right because we know the word of God for ourselves. Amen. 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 And that helps us give us the protection that is putting on the whole armor of God. Praise God. The Holy Spirit will lead us and tell us all things. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. The Holy Spirit will reveal everything for us. Lastly, church, Paul lets us know in verse 18 to pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication, to pray without season, to pray to do what is right and pleasing in the sight of God. To pray and ask God to help us on this Christian journey. To pray to do the will of God. To pray for more favor, more strength, more courage to stand against the evil one. For this road is not easy, church. This is not an easy road at all. So we must ask God for strength, for courage to stand against the evil one. Temptations are going to come for us to do wrong. And when they come, we must pray and ask God to help us fight this battle. Praise God. We must Praise pray God. for one another. And he also says in verse 19, pray for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Yes, church, pray for me. Please pray for me. The pastors need your prayers. Amen. Pray for all the Amen. spiritual leaders that are in our churches, that are in our community. For we're on a spiritual warfare and we need to pray and ask God to do the miraculous. We need to pray and ask God to do deliverance. We need to pray and ask God for healing so that we can be victorious in the army of the lord amen. amen amen so church put on the whole armor of god fasten the belt of truth around our waist and pull on the breastplate of righteousness pull on our shoes filled with the gospel of peace put on the shield of faith put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit be in the word of God and always pray. Then having done all of that, church, having done all of that, stand, stand firm. Be in his steadfast church, unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God and be soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. 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 This is the word of God 
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. We are on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. 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 So we need to put on the whole armor of God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Our aim of invitation is blessed quietness. Amen. Please stand. <laughs> Merciful God, we thank you for the word that went forth. We give you thanks, oh God, that you're instructing us and teaching us to prepare ourselves for the spiritual forces that are out there. So God, we're asking you to help us to put on the whole armor of God. 
Help us, oh God, to put on the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith and walk with the sword of the spirit. Help us, oh God, to have that helmet of salvation, oh God. Cover us, oh God, and protect us uh, and help us to be able to stand. Give us the courage and the strength, oh God, to, to rebuke, oh God, to resist the devil, oh God, so that when he comes, God, that he'll be able to flee. So God, we thank Thank you God for everything that you do we thank you for the strength that you've given us even now God and we thank you God for being our prince of peace so when the storms of life are raging we know God that you are there with us and we have nothing to fear in Jesus name we pray amen 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 please be seated amen We now have our prayer of confession. Everyone together, let us say our prayer of confession together. Mighty one of Israel, we walk in paths well trodden by generations of fellow believers. We love to claim you as our God and to be known as your people. We love to hear the great deeds of the saints who went before us. We love to count ourselves in their mighty company. Forgive our hesitancy to build our own monuments to your importance in our lives. Forgive our reluctance to put on our own armor of faith as we face the powers of sin and death in our lives. Amen. Amen. Words of assurance. Even though you doubt and question, God's love, I'm sorry, is poured on you, in you and through you to others. Rest assured in God's presence and love for you that will never fail or abandon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, restored, and forgiven. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to lift up our tithes and our offering. And as Sister Brenda had mentioned, all those donations that we receive, we're going to lift those up as well. And as a reminder, to continue to give your tithes and offering via Zell, that is at Bethlehem2 at yahoo.com. You place your offering in the box that is in front of the front pew. Praise God. And you can also mail your tithes and offering to Sister Lanley. Amen. So let us receive our offering at this time. Please stand. Almighty God, we thank you for blessing us abundantly. We thank you, God, for pouring in our hearts to give. So, God, we lift up these offerings, these tithes, these donations, all the special offerings that we've received so far from the events that we've had throughout the year. God, we thank you. So we're asking you to continue to bless us, oh God. Bless the offering, God. Increase it, multiply it, so that we can continue to do your will here on earth in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A uh, reminder that next Sunday, 
Union United Methodist Church, their men will be having Men's Day. So if we have a representation from Bethel, that'll be nice because that's our sister church that is down the block from us to celebrate with them as they celebrate Men's Day. Amen? And that's at 10 a.m. At their, at their church, their Men's Day service next Sunday. The word of the week, put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. And that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. I hope to see everyone again next Sunday. That's the last Sunday in the month of August. And then after that, it will be September. Amen? Amen. Amen. So be safe, everyone. And uh, we're going to close out. Thanks, everyone, for coming out today in this stormy weather. And so thank you again, Sister Bavon and Brother Nathaniel. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And we're continually praying for the Swift family. We're praying that God's healing will be upon the Father. And we're asking for uh, travel mercy when they come back to New York. Amen. Amen. So our closing hymn is Onward Christian Soldiers. Hymn number 575. <laughs>
Praise God. Receive the benediction. Go out and make known the mystery of the gospel. <clears throat> Keep alert and pray at all times. Draw strength from God's power and so stand firm against all that will corrupt you. And may God arm you with truth and righteousness. May Christ Jesus give you words of spirit and life. And may the Holy Spirit draw you near to God's presence and bless you with honor and grace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Go in peace, amen. Thank you.